Today, we're going to visit with Carolyn Ballard, fire specialist with the United States Forest Service. Carolyn is going to explain the increase in fire danger from the beetle-killed trees. She's also going to talk about the long-term increase in fire hazards that will affect the entire mountain range for many years to come. Uh, Carolyn, we're standing here in a, a small area that's been killed by the pine bark beetle. And I know this represents what's going on about 400,000 acres on the Sierra National Forest. How will this affect firefighting and, and fuels over the next few years? So what we have here is, is pretty extreme fuel loading in terms of tonnage per acre and, and flammability. Um, this fuel bed is extremely receptive to firebrands. So if we get a fire started and we get live hot firebrands being thrown ahead of a main fire, this is extremely receptive. And, mm. and fuels like this will actually catch on fire extremely readily on hot summer days. And then we will have fire moving through an area like this quite rapidly. An area like this actually produces flames of upwards of about 25 foot tall flame heights. Um, at about four feet or four to eight feet is when ground forces and engine crews and hand crews um, no longer can do um, direct attack on these kind of fires. And so when you have flame lengths of about 25 feet and higher, um, we need our aerial firefighting resources. And in that respect, um, we're going to need that aerial assault to be able to get out in front of our firefighters to, to make an aerial attack and leave some of that fire behavior so we can get ground forces in to put in fire line. Um, in a case like this, if you have that kind of 25 foot flame links, um, it picks up embers and these needles are very receptive to being picked up and burning into the fire column. Um, when those embers are picked up into that column, they will be carried as, as heated material, burning material that can be thrown a quarter mile and upwards of even to about a mile ahead of the main fire front mm. starting spot fires. Um, so for our firefighters, they're very worried about um, the extreme fire behavior we will see this summer and how to di engage and potentially disengage if fire behavior gets to the point where they're no longer effective as a firefighting resource. And we don't want them to get out in front of a fire and risk their lives, but how do we stop a moving fire front in a case like this? Um, so some of the things that the fire agencies are doing that the Forest Service is working with CAL FIRE is creating fire breaks. And what we're standing in now is, was a shaded fuel break with live green trees. It's no longer that way. So what we see here um, will actually be lopped and bucked and put into piles and burned. Um, and so we will eventually have an open grassy area where firefighters can actually make a tactical and strategic stand to stop fires that are coming out of the front country and moving into our mountain communities. Um, we feel together with CAL FIRE that by creating these fire breaks and having them um, ready and completed prior to fire season that if we do get a low elevation fire that they, we can take a stand here and stop that kind of fire before it moves up into our mountain communities. Um, but the fire potential now is also those standing dead trees. And standing red and dead trees that we see across the forest um, are very much a potential for torching and potential for crown fire. So what you're telling me, Carolyn, is that the Forest Service does have a plan, uh, and I'm assuming it's very overwhelming, but you are, uh, you have a plan and you're putting that into effect. Um, it is very overwhelming um, in the magnitude of the mortality that we have seen. And given the 400,000 acres, we have to be very strategic about what we can get done now in terms of fire season this year versus looking forward for forest restoration in the future. But for this year, our plan is to be able to protect communities, use our fuel breaks, get in and take care of the slash and the trees along roads to make sure that we can get the public in and out in case of an emergency, get our firefighting forces in, that's egress, and we are looking at infrastructure. We're very much concerned about fire behavior um, with our hydroelectric facilities, with transmission lines, and so we are working um, with Office of Emergency Services and the Fresno County Task Force to be able to focus all of our attention, um, the utility companies, CAL FIRE, Office of Emergency Services, Fresno County Fire, about um, creating those fuel breaks, getting those in place, getting those roads cleaned up so that we can protect the public. And it